Jehovah, the Elohim, and the fallen angels. This video will be taken from volume 2, page 526 of The Secret Doctrine by H.P. Blavatsky, published in 1888. There is a link for a free ebook listed below so that you can follow along. Please help the channel out and give the video a thumbs up and comment below. Blavatsky says, the author of, quote, the new aspects of life, end quote, describes the Jewish God very correctly from the Kabbalistic standpoint as, quote, the spirit of earth, which had revealed itself to the Jew as Jehovah on page 209. It was that spirit again who, after the death of Jesus, assumed his form and personated him as the risen Christ. The doctrine of Serenthius and several Gnostic sects will agree, but with slight variation, as anyone can see. But the author's explanations and deductions are remarkable. Quote, None knew better than Moses, and so well as he how great was the power of those, the gods of Egypt, with whose priest he had contended, end quote. He says, quote, the gods of which Jehovah is claimed to be the god over, end quote, by the Jews only. What were these gods, these Akar, of which Jehovah, the Akkad, or the archetype, is claimed to be the god by overcoming them? The author asked, to which our occultism answers, those whom the church now calls the fallen angels and collectively Satan, the dragon, overcome if we have to accept her or the church's dictum by Michael and the host, that Michael being simply Jehovah himself, one of the subordinate spirits at best. Therefore, the author is again right in saying, quote, the Greeks believed in the existence of daemons, but they were anticipated by the Hebrews who held the belief that Jehovah was a personating spirit. And there was a class of personating spirits, which they then designated demons or personators. Admitting with Jehovah, who expressly asserts it, the existence of other gods, which bore personators of the one God. Were these other gods simply a higher class of personating spirits, which had acquired and exercised greater powers? And is not personation the key to the mystery of the spirit state? But once granting this position, how are we to know that Jehovah was not a personating spirit, a spirit which arrogated to himself that it was and thus became the personator of the one unknown and unknowable God? How do we know that the spirit calling itself Jehovah in arrogating to itself his attributes did not thus cause its own designation to be imputed to the one who is in reality as nameless and incognizable from pages 144 through 145 of the new aspects of life then the author shows that quote the spirit jehovah is a personator end quote on its own admission it acknowledged to moses that quote it had appeared to the patriarchs as the god Shaddaiah, as well as the god Helion, and with the same breath it assumed the name of Jehovah. And it is on the faith of the assertion of this personator that the names El, Eloah, Elohim, and Shaddaiah have been read and interpreted in a juxtaposition with Jehovah as, quote, the Lord God Almighty, end quote. Then when the name Jehovah became ineffable 
to the designation Adonai, or, quote, Lord, end quote, it was substituted for it. And, quote, it was owing to this substitution that Lord passed from the Jewish to the Christian, quote, word, and, quote, world, as a designation of God, end quote, listed on page 146. And how are we to know that the author may add that Jehovah was not many spirits personated, even the seemingly one, Yod or yod Hey. But if the Christian church was the first to make the existence of Satan a dogma, it was because, as shown in Isis, the devil, the powerful enemy of God, had to become the cornerstone of the pillar of the church. And H.P. Blavatsky puts a note in next to Isis being the devil or enemy of God in brackets, question mark, exclamation, exclamation. Again, in these days, that would have been WTF, is this person talking about? For as the theosophist M. Jules Besak truly observes in his, quote, Satan, Ule Diab, Diable, or Diabla, meaning Satan, or the devil, on page 9, we had to avoid appearing to allow the dogma of the double principle by making the Satan creator of the real power and to explain the original evil. One professes against manes, or the god ghosts, or ghost gods, the hypothesis of a permission of one of the whole powerful, end quote. Their choice and their policy were unfortunate. Anyhow, either the personator of the lower god of Abraham and Jacob ought to have been made entirely distinct from the mystic, quote, father, end quote, of Jesus, or the, quote, fallen, end quote, angels should have been left unslandered by further fictions. Every god of the Gentiles is connected with and closely related to Jehovah, the Elohim, for they are all one host, whose units differ only in name in the esoteric teachings. Between the, quote, obedient and the fallen, end quote, angels, there is no difference whatever, except in their respective functions or rather in the inertia of some and the activity of others among those, quote, Dian, or Kohans, end quote, or Elohim, who were, quote, commissioned to create, end quote, or i.e., to fabricate the manifested world out of the eternal materials. The Kabbalists say that the true name of Satan is that of Jehovah placed upside down. For, quote, Satan is not a black god, but the negation of the white deity, end quote, or the truth, or the light of truth. God is light, and Satan is the necessary darkness or shadow to set it off for without which pure light would be invisible as well as incomprehensible. Says Eliphas Levi, quote, for the initiates, the devil is not a person, but a creative force for good as for evil, end quote. They, the initiates, represented this force which presides at physical generation under the mysterious form of the god Pan, or nature, whence the horns and the hooves of that mythical and symbolic figure, as also the Christian, quote, god, goat of the witches, end quote, of the, quote, Sabbath, end quote. With regard this, too, the Christians have imprudently forgotten 
that the goat was also the victim selected for the atonement of all the sins of Israel, that the scapegoat was indeed the sacrificial martyr, the symbol of the greatest mystery on earth, the fall into generation or reincarnation. Only the Jews have long forgotten the real meaning of their, to the non-initiated, ridiculous hero, selected from the drama of life and the great mysteries enacted by them in the desert or in Egypt or in the darkness. And the Christians, they have never knew it. Eliphas Levi seeks to explain the dogma of his church by paradoxes and metaphors, but succeeds very poorly in the face of the many volumes written by pious Roman Catholic demonologists under the approbation and the auspices of Rome in this 19th century of ours. But the initiates give an explanation which differs from that given by Eliphas Levi, whose genius and crafty intellect had to submit to a certain compromise dictated to him by Rome. We'll continue on in the next video from The Secret Doctrine by H.P. Blavatsky with Lucifer and the Astral Light. Please don't forget to give the video a like and help the channel to grow. Until next time, I bid you all peace, love yourselves, and love each other unconditionally. Thank <laughs> you.